great workers. The next evening, Grandpa Joe went on with the story. Mr. Charlie said, "Not so very long ago, there used to be thousands of people working in Mr. Willie Wonka's factory. The one day, all of a sudden, Mr. Wonka had to ask every single one of them to leave, to go home, never to come back." But why? asked Charlie. Because of spies. Spies? Yes. All the other chocolate makers you see had begun to grow jealous of the wonderful sweets that spies used to sell his secret recipes. The spies took jobs in the one car factory, pretending they they were ordinary workers. And while they were there, each one of them found、uh, exactly. <coughs> Certain or special thing was made, and did they go back to their own factories and tell us, Charlie, they must have as a rapper Joe, because soon after that, Phil Roberts' factory started making an ice cream that would never melt, even in the hottest sun. The Mr. Brundle's factory can. How with the chewing gum that never lost its flavor, however much you chewed, and then Mr. Lowers factory began making sugar balloons that you could blow up to huge size before you pop them with a spin and gobble them up, and so on and so on. And Mr. Willie Wonka told his so beard that shouted, "This is terrible! I shall." Be ruined. There were spies everywhere. I shall have to close the factory. But he didn't do that. Charlie said. Oh yes, he did. He told all the workers that he was、uh, he was sorry, but they would have to go home. Then he shut the main gates and fastened、uh, them with the chain. And suddenly, one of the giant fa- chocolate factory became silent and deserted. The chimneys stopped ma- smoking. The cha- ma- Machine stops whirring, and from then on, not, not a single, <coughs> not a soul went in or out, and even Mr. Lemon Coin saw disappear completely. Months and months went by. Grandpa Joe went on, but still the factory. Remain closed, and everybody said, "Poor Mr. Wonka, he was no nice when he made such marvelous things." But sh- he's f- finished now; it's all over. Then something astonishing happened. One day early in the morning, the colors of White Smoke World seemed to be coming up with a thousand of the tall sh- or chimneys of the factory. People in the town stopped and stared. What's going on? They cried. Summons, as summons, little f- furnaces. Mister Wonka must be opening up again. They ran to the gates, expecting to see them wide open, and Mister Wonka standing where there to welcome his worker back. But now the giant. Great iron gates, the、uh, silk locked and chained as securely as ever, and Mister Hunger was now here to be seen. But the factory is working. The people shouted, "Listen! You can hear the machines. They're all whirring again.、Okay. You can smell the smell of smelting chocolate in the air." Grandpa Joe leaned toward and laid the long, bony finger on Charlie's knee, and he said softly. My most mysterious of all, Charlie walked shadows in the windows of the factory. The people standing on the street side could see small dark shadows moving about behind the frosted glass windows. Shadows of whom? Said Charlie quickly. That's exactly what everybody else wanted to know. The place is full of workers. The people shouted. Nobody's going in. The Gates are locked. It's crazy. Nobody ever comes out either. There was no question at all. So Grandpa Joe 
that the factory was learning, and it gone a uh, learning ever else. Well, this last ten years was more the chocolates and the sweets is been turning out to become. More fantastic and delicious all the time. And of course, now where Mr. Wonka invents some new and wonderful sweet, neither Mr. Finkelberger nor Mr. Pondos and Mr. Slugger no, nor anybody else is able to copy it. No spies can go into the factory to find out how it is made. But Grandpa, who cried Charlie, who is Mister Wonka using to do all the work work in the factory? Nobody knows, Charlie. But that's absurd. As someone asked Mister Wonka, nobody sees him anymore. He never comes out. The only thing they come out of the place were chocolates and the sweets. Come out through a special trip towards in the wall, all packed and the uh, address. They <coughs> address, and they all picked up everybody by post office trucks. But Grandpa, what sort of people they that work in there, my dear boy? Said Grandpa Joe. That is one of that great mysteries of the chocolate making world. We know only one thing about them. They were very small, the faint shadows that sometimes appear behind the fiddles. Especially late at night when the lights are on, all those of tiny people, people are totally than my knee. They are any such a people, Charlie said. Just then, Mr. Bucket, Charlie's father came into the room. He was home from the toothpaste factory, and he was wiping an even newspaper rather excitedly. Have you heard the noise? He cried. He held up the table so they, they, they could see the huge headlight. The headlight said, Wonka factory to be up in the last uh, lucky field. Chapter 5 The Golden Tickets. You mean people are actually going to be allowed to go inside the factory? cried Rapper Joe. Read us what it says quickly. All right, said Mr. Bucket, smoothing out the newspaper. Listen, <coughs> a running bulletin. Mr. Wally Wonka, the confectionery genius whom nobody has seen for the last ten years and out the following notice today. I will won't I have decided to all our five children just fine mind you and no more to busy my factory this year. This lucky five will be sure no around personally by me, and they will be allowed to see all the secrets and the magic of the factory that and the at the end of the tour, as a special present, all of them will be given enough chocolates and the all sweets to last them for the rest of their lives. So watch out for the golden tickets. Five golden tickets have been printed on the gold paper. And these five golden tickets have been hidden underneath the ordinary wrapping paper of five ordinary bars of chocolate. These five chocolate bars may be anywhere, in any shop, in any street, in any town, in any country in the world, upon any country where one can see sweets all sold. And the five lucky finders, those five golden tickets, although only also will be allowed to sit with my factory and see what it's like down inside. Good luck to you all. The happy hunting side Willy Wonka. The man study, mother Grandpa Josephine. He's brilliant, cried Grandpa Joe. He's a magician. Just imagine what will happen now. The world well, we'll be searching for those golden tickets. Everybody will be buying Wonka's chocolate bars in the hope of finding one. We sell more than ever before. Oh, how exciting it would be more than ever before. Oh, how exciting it would to be to find out. Oh, oh, and all the chocolate and the seeds. 
Then you could eat for the rest of your life. Free, said Grandpa George. Just imagine that they have to deliver them in the truck, said just said Grandpa Georgina. It makes me quite ill to think of it," said Grandpa Josephine. "Nonsense!" cried Grandpa Joe. "Wouldn't it be something jolly to open a bowl of chocolate and see a golden ticket glistering inside?" "It certainly would, Grandpa, but there is no hope," Charlie said sadly. "I only get one bar a year." "You never know, darling," said Grandpa Georgina. Grandma Georgina. It's your birthday next week. You have as much chance as nobody, anybody else. I'm afraid that simply isn't true," said Grandpa George. "The kids, you are, are going to find Grandpa uh, George. The、uh, kids who are going to find the gold tickets, or the ones who can afford to buy balls of chocolate every day. Our Charlie gets only one a year." There is an old hope.